Mobile operator Vodacom reported a 5.1 fall, uh, rather 5.1 percent fall in half-year earnings, and declared an interim dividend on 420 cents per share, up 1.2 percent. The group's capital expenditure in South Africa jumped 11.1 percent year on year, pushing spending on its network to 5.6 billion rand. Earlier, I spoke to CEO Shamil Jusup about the group's financial performance over the past six months. I think, uh, you know, a um, pleasing set of results for us, of course, impacted by the stronger end. So, you know, we do have a bit of a conversion issue coming through in the numbers. But on a normalized basis, you know, group revenue up 7.9 percent, operating profit up 5.7 percent. So, you know, very pleasing in that regard. Uh, we now serve 130 million uh, customers across the group, of which 57 million are buying financial services from us. So, you know, I think um, and a very, very strong performance um, in financial services with 4.5 trillion rand now being processed through our platform across Africa. So, you know, uh, I think all in all, very, very, very pleased with the result. And we added 6.2 million new customers to our networks. Let's talk about the financial services business for, but uh, what growth potential are you seeing there, um, especially when it comes to customer adoption? Well, it's going really, really well. I mean, the, um, uh, you know, 57.3 million customers using a financial service product from us across all the markets, you know, we've seen, we've seen very, very good growth. In South Africa, we've just recently launched the Volupay Super app. And um, it's, uh, it's flying. Um, I mean, you'll see in the Google stores that there's been more than 500,000 downloads, um, you know, uh, and, um, and that's just one of the, one of the stores. So it's, um, it's, going, it's going really well and uh, very, very pleased with the uptake, <clears throat> but also with the, um, with the transactions and, and, um, and the frequency of customers coming back. Just recently, you announced uh, that you'd be entering into a binding agreement to acquire 55% shareholding in uh, Vodafone Egypt. For those who may be hearing it for the first time, I know we announced, uh, we touched on it a little bit with our market analyst last week, but the rationale behind this particular acquisition, um, what are you seeing, especially when you look at uh, the Egyptian market uh, and the customer base there? Well, I think, I mean, it's a really uh, attractive asset because um, for first it's got 43% uh, market share, 45 million customers. So, you know, big opportunity to, uh, to grow into the um, Egyptian market. Um, and, um, yeah, uh, you know, very, very good growth rates as well. Uh, so growing double digit every year, a high, high teens in fact. So, you know, a very, very good opportunity for us to take advantage of, uh, of the Egyptian market, more than 100 million people, but also to bring our system of advantage, which is our strategy to be into the Egyptian market, specifically capture the opportunity in our financial services. Take me through the, uh, the highlights for you when you look at the evolution of Mpesa. Well, I think it's been really, really good because what we've done is, um, I mean, of course, it started off in, uh, in, in Kenya, but it's grown to uh, if effectively covering all our markets now and has grown uh, ex uh, uh, exponentially over the, last, uh, over the last couple of years. Um, you may have remembered that we also created Mpesa Africa in partnership with Savicom, where essentially we build once and replicate across, uh, across the different markets. And then separately in South Africa, because we haven't had the a base platform, we launched the Alipay platform in, in South Africa called Vodapay. Um, and that's also a window into what we're going to do uh, with Mpesa because it's capturing the e-commerce opportunity as well. So on the one side, we continue to evolve the Mpesa platform. On the, on, and then, uh, then, of course, we're also partnering with great uh, tech like, uh, like Alipay to bring, uh, to bring the services into Africa. And we've been replicating uh, the success of our super app across all our markets. Speaking of those markets, uh, let's talk about South Africa. What are you seeing from the service revenue side? How did you do uh, in the past six months? And what has been underpinning that performance? So we saw revenue growth no, uh, of, of about 7% and, and service revenue growth about of 3.6%. Remember, we had a, a big price cut um, you know, uh, in, uh, on the 1st of April again, uh, in line with the promises that we made 
to to the market in our social contract. Um, so you know what we what we have seen is uh, customers are more under pressure, uh, but um, and we're also betting against a very very strong first half last year. But I think overall a very good set of results. Um, enterprise starting to recover. Uh, you know, data customers growing quite nicely. The number of smart devices growing nicely uh, on the network. So we, we're quite pleased with our performance in South Africa. And while we still on the topic of South Africa, when you look at your capex for the next six months or so, what does that look like? So in South Africa, we're going to spend ten and a half billion this year, um, in, in of course in creating uh, further, uh, firstly coping with the amount of traffic, but creating further resilience on the network. Of course, the power cuts uh, doesn't help um, because now we have to spend more money on batteries. Last year, we spent over a billion rand in batteries. And again, this year, we, we're going to have to spend significantly uh, to keep up with, uh, with, with making the network more resilient to power cuts. Right. So let's talk a little bit about the regulatory side of things. I mean, where are we when it comes to um, ICASA and the Spectrum auction from your side as Vodacom? Well, I think uh, what's encouraging, of course, is firstly the temporary or interim spectrum, as it's now called, uh, process which will, which will um, uh, be completed this week. I think that's encouraging because at least uh, if we can sort the temporary spectrum and we can cope with the traffic that was, that was created during COVID, network saw more than 100% increase in traffic. So being able to, to cope with that traffic, I think, is really key. So I think is an interim solution that's good. Uh, and, um, you know, I think uh, very good that ICASA created a process uh, around that. Uh, secondly, the Spectrum auction is planned for March. Um, and, uh, of course, we'll be working uh, with, with ICASA to try and ensure that, uh, you know, uh, that, that goal is uh, being, being made, and as, as would be the other industry players. Um, I, but, you know, access to Spectrum is critical. It's the lifeline of a network. So very, very crucial that we meet the uh, March uh, deadline, but also that the uh, digital migration is completed uh, and that, you know, uh, a TV moves uh, off the digital spectrum uh, uh, so that or moves off analog uh, so that the, uh, the, uh, the transition into, uh, uh, into making that uh, spectrum available for the telcos uh, is done. 